Christ. Welcome. Today, Wednesday, 23rd week in Ordinary Time, Year 1, we celebrate the feast of the birth of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And our Gospel is from Matthew chapter 1, verse 1 to 16 and 18 to 23. My friends in Christ, in our Gospel today, Matthew outlined the genealogy of Jesus. It started from Abraham up to Jesus being born of Mary, with Joseph standing as the connecting person to the promise that Jesus the Messiah will come from the lineage of David. My dear friends, there was an option in today's Gospel to skip this seemingly innocent and boring part which composed lots of names, many of which were hard to pronounce. But to a Jew, it is very interesting because they are more or less familiar with the characters in the Gospel. From it, my friends, one can conclude that Jesus did not come from a perfect generation. Yes, when we look at the Gospel text today, one can conclude that Jesus did not come from a perfect generation. His generation possessed both excellent and dysfunctional members in his generation. Sinners and saints were present. They were glorious and not so glorious people. God chose people who were free and not controlled to be immaculate. My dear friends in Christ, this also testified to the fact that God can write straight with crooked lines. My friends in Christ, the birth of Mary we celebrate today was also part of the plan of God. Her birth cannot be separated from the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. We believe, as Christians, that Mary was chosen by God to be the mother of his son. Thus, since Jesus was God, Mary had to be immaculate, yes. The sinless Jesus should be born from a sinless or a saved mother. My dear friends in Christ, today marks the day when God's plan is gradually being fulfilled. And so, with the birth of Mary, the birth of the Messiah comes. Isn't that wonderful, Church? Mary's birthday is for a mission. Mary's birthday is for a mission, Church. A singular mission not given to anybody before. She is born to be the mother of the Son of God. Wow! My dear friends, very interesting. As we go through the bloodline of Jesus, one can easily name those who many of us would have preferred to be out of the list. Take for instance, as we go through the Gospel list of names, we have David the murderer, an adulterer, Rahab the prostitute, Jacob who deceived his father to steal the birthright from his elder brother Esau. And we have Tamar who committed incest with her father-in-law Judah. Yet, my friends, nothing can stop God from his plans, even with these people. What an interesting God we serve. Nothing can stop God from his plans. God's ways are not man's ways. My friends in Christ, Mary was full of grace from her birth. We acclaim her today. We acclaim her obedience 
to the father in spite of the danger to her life by deciding to give birth to Jesus, the Savior of the world. But it didn't stop there, my friends. She was a perfect disciple to her son, Jesus. And even if she was his mother, she showed to him and to us that she will not bank on that motherhood alone. While being a good mother, she too was being a good disciple. My dear friends, she was indeed worthy of her birth. And I want to repeat that. She was indeed worthy of her birth. And her role as powerful intercessor is to point us to her son, Jesus the Christ. Yes, her role as intercessor is to point us to her son, Jesus the Christ. This wonderful, this mighty, this powerful and liberating name, Jesus, the Savior of the world. And so my dear friends in Christ today, as we reflect on the gospel text that the church gives us on this feast day, What can we take home with us? It does not matter where you may have come from. You can always be better than you were before. Let me repeat that. It doesn't matter where you may have come from. You can always be better than you were before. Your past should not determine your future. In God, there is always hope. In God, there is always newness of life. In God, there is always a second chance. Amen. Hello.